Rebuilding a Stuart Double Tank V steam engine part 8, shortening bolts and making gaskets, making a card pattern for the cylinder cladding, followed by making and fitting the cylinder cladding. This is what arrived in the post from Blackgate's engineering this morning, three packs of 6BA by half inch socket cap screws. I don't use fixings like this very much on model steam engines, but in certain applications they're very useful. For instance, fastening the cylinders to the standards underneath the cylinders that are ideal. At half an inch, these bolts are too long for the application. I will need to shorten them. And here's how I usually shorten small bolts. I have an old pair of pliers and a mark the position which gives me the length that I require. Then all I have to do is just push the bolt against the one inch belt sander. As with a lot of things in my life, very quick, very simple and very easy to do. I had to shorten eight of these steel bolts in this manner. Mass production in miniature. Originally the bolts in the top of the standards were 7BA. These are 6BA bolts. I re-threaded the cylinder to accept 6BA bolts because two had already been done and I wanted them all to be the same. The brass bolts are temporary and as you can see they're quite a tight fit. When I remove them one by one they all come out okay apart from the last one that's called Sod's Law or Murphy's Law. It's amazing that often the last part that you work on is the most problematic. Here's a shot of one of the cylinders with the covers fitted. And you will notice that the cylinder covers are a larger diameter than the cylinder. This is to accommodate the cylinder cladding. And while on the subject of cylinder cladding, this is what I'm going to use. This is the stuff currently produced by Stuart Models. It's aluminium, it used to be steel. I can't just fit this stuff straight to the cylinder, I need to make a cardboard template. And not only will the cardboard template be the finished size to wrap around the cylinder, it will have the holes in it that I can transfer onto the metal. The ruler tells me that the piece of cladding needs to be one and one eighth of an inch. Here are the cladding templates that are made for the Stuart Triple Expansion engine. But I can't remember what I did with the rest of the Christmas card. Maybe I could use a different material. Before I start though, I need to look at the job and look at the cylinders, which are a bit of a mess. One of the cylinders is okay because the mounting holes for the cladding are drilled in the right place. Before I drill and thread the holes in the other cylinder, I'm going to plug up the very large holes that someone made for the oversized flanges. I noticed that the exhaust port was full of some sort of rubbish. I thought it would be a good idea to use my scriber and remove this. Just look at it, it's all over the bench. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to remove it, and to clean the threads, I'm going to use a quarter by 32 threads per inch tap. There's a lot of it. It must be some sort of sealant from a past incarnation of the engine. Even the tap that I used was clogged up. I had to clean it before I put it away. I had a bright idea, because I have a lot of this stuff. It's gasket material. A friend of mine has a company who produce gaskets and from time to time I call in and see him to scrounge some more gaskets from him. They're just offcuts from what he makes. And for a fleeting moment I thought I would get away by using a gasket in place of the CAD template for the cladding. But alas no, it was far too soft and rubbery. I'm going to make a full set of gaskets for the cylinder and it will be of course ideal for this. I'm using my small drawing compass and I've set it to describe a three quarters of an inch diameter circle. I'm going to make the bottom gaskets. I've cut the part in half, it's much easier to work with smaller pieces. And here I'm carefully cutting out the centre. I'm purposely on the inside of the line because I get it to the finish size by using this. It's a flapper wheel fitted into my bench mounted Proxon motor tool. I found that by using this method I can make gaskets that are really accurate. The only trouble is they do burr over and I have to clean that off with Scotch Brite before I fit them. Once the gasket fitted on the three quarters of an inch register on the bottom cylinder cover, all I did was cut round it with my pair of scissors and I ended up with a gasket. I didn't need to draw any more lines on the gasket material as the cylinder cover was a perfect guide for the old pair of scissors. The next part of the job is to drill the holes for the bolts. I don't think I need to show the entire operation, I'm sure you get the message. Here I'm cutting out the centre of the other piece of gasket material, followed by trimming it to size 
then cleaning it up with a piece of scotch brite. Then I press the cylinder cover complete with the gasket material onto this scrap piece of mahogany and drill through the holes. And if you look at the mahogany, you will see that I've done this before. I made the two lower cylinder cover gaskets and the two upper cylinder cover gaskets. Then I put them all in a box so I won't lose them. The only difference between the two gaskets for the upper and lower covers are the number of holes. On this engine, the top cylinder cover has six holes and the lower cover only has four. Trying to keep the bench tidy, I'm putting away my really nice old set of drawing instruments. I found some good quality card. This came with my car and it held some documents and I've been using it in recent years for holding some transfers. And using this card, I made the template that I need. This one template should be okay for both cylinders, but just in case, I did cut another piece of cardboard. I created holes in the card template where they needed to be. Then I cut the piece of metal, once again using my old pair of scissors. Cutting this aluminium does distort it slightly. This is an easy fix. You just put it face down on a piece of clean wood and gently tap it with a hide-faced hammer on the reverse side. A simple fix if you don't hit it too hard. I drilled a small pilot hole where the exhaust outlet needs to be on the cladding. And in this clip, I'm enlarging the hole to quarter of an inch using a quarter of an inch twist drill. Health and safety. Notice that when I'm drilling, the piece of metal is down below the vice jaws, so if the drill was to grab, it couldn't go anywhere. Once I drilled the quarter of an inch hole in the piece of metal, I used a deburring tool to deburr it. This quarter of an inch hole will need elongating, it needs to be oval because the piece of metal is bent and at the inner end it needs more clearance for the exhaust adapter. For drilling the small holes, I use my Proxon motor tool in the small drill press on the bench. Recently from my friends at Blackgates Engineering, I bought this bag full of 7BA by quarter of an inch long bolts. The only problem is, the holes in the cylinders have been tapped 8BA. So I'm going to enlarge them slightly. I'm using a tapping size drill for 7BA and here I'm threading the holes using a tap. The original holes for the exhaust flange can now be disregarded. What I need to do now is shorten some of these bolts and I'm using a pair of surgical calipers to hold them one at a time as I shorten them to the correct length using my one inch belt sander as previously shown. And this is what the cladding looks like when it's bolted to the cylinder. It looks okay. To make sure that the cladding was the right size, I rubbed it on some wet or dry sandpaper. This is 400 grit. And once it was level with the cylinder and the port face, everything was fine. Now it's time to fit the exhaust outlet. I also used a small O-ring as a belt and braces approach for sealing. Plus it covers up the gaps in the hole in the cladding. This clip shows why you need to slightly elongate the hole in the cladding for this exhaust adapter because it's very important that the exhaust manifold adapter does not put any pressure on the cladding itself. And that is it for this episode. One of the cylinders is now ready to be bolted in position on top of the standard. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.